Okay, here we go. I'd uh, love to show you guys this rainwater collection project that I've been working on. Uh, I'm using these IBC totes, which are intermediate bulk container totes. They're a thousand liters each. And uh, yeah, it's about 10 times the volume of this rainwater tank, uh, which is what it's currently being used. At the moment, I don't have any of the downspout redirected. We just set them up. But uh, I can show you the different components that I used to make the IBC totes into a functional rain container. Okay, so on the back side of these IBC tanks, that which are currently stacked one on top of the other, I guess I should start by saying I grabbed some concrete uh, pieces that were around the farm and I laid them down on the soil. That's just to prevent any metal contact that's directly in contact with the soil, which may cause uh, a bit of rust issues. Uh, as far as filling it up, like I said, they, if you redirect the gutter over to the top of the tank, you can put it into the top of the top hole. Uh, and if you wrap that with mosquito mesh, then you should be all set in order to fill up uh, from directly from the rainwater tanks. Or from the uh, downspout, sorry. Uh, as the water all fills up, it all finds this uh, Uniseal product that I just started working with. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how good it is yet, but hopefully it doesn't leak. It's, uh, it's really not supposed to leak. You basically put the grommet in and then put this two inch ABS pipe through here with a bunch of regular plumbing fittings that you can get from Home Depot or any hardware store. Uh, so yeah, I got this cap on top just to give a little bit of air pressure release in case there's any kind of dropping of air. It overflows from the top, egg, top tank to the pipe and then to the top of the bottom tank. And so once this is full, it'll fill up this next. And uh, the reason I wanted to do the top tank first is just a little bit more uh, pressure from your garden hose fitting, which I will show you next. So most IBC totes come with a two inch or possibly a three inch, uh, what they call a ball valve. That's its big one, big lever here. And what I've done there is got some custom fittings. Uh, this is like a two inch coarse threaded fitting, but the different types of fitting depends on the type of uh, IBC tote you get. This one reduces it down to like a half inch garden hose size, which now has another turn off. So even if this is open, uh, this can turn on and off. And then what I've done here is just added a quick connect regular garden hose which you can just snap on snap off uh, as you need it and then you can go ahead and water all your plants uh, as I mentioned before the top tank will have a lot more pressure than the bottom tank but eventually we'll have a nice quick connect uh, fitting for the bottom tank too and you can still get a reasonable amount of water out of here as long as it's uh, a little bit full. Cool. Yeah, so here we are over at the barn originally we're at the house and in the, in the kind of a dense house garden uh, this is a location for two more tanks. They're not here at the moment, but they will be soon. At the moment, we just have these rain barrels overflowing from one to the next. Uh, but eventually, we'll have just like the other place, we'll have a tower with two tanks, uh, the overflow, the ABS piping, uh, and the fittings from uh, various retailers online that could reduce the two inch ball valve to a uh, either half inch or three quarter inch or a five eighths uh, garden hose adapter. Uh, once we have this water available, we have all these gardens that we can then uh, share some of the water with and it'll slow it down for summer. Okay, so we'll come on over, I'll show you the other tanks. This is a few more left in this uh, voyage of rainwater harvesting. Uh, the original farm tanks from the barn, we have these big black tanks on a stack of wooden pallets. It, uh, it is working. But uh, what we're going to do is try to get a little bit more height out of it and put one of these white tanks uh, underneath the black tank. Eventually, this black tank will overflow into the top of this tank. And then, just like the last system, you get this ABS piping. As the tank fills all the way up, it overflows at this junction point. Have a little bit of an air release. It comes down into the top of the secondary tank. And over here, eventually, we'll have one more um, uh, Uniseal. Uh, grommet and a two inch connection from this to the bottom of another tank, sorry, the top of the other tank. So once this fills, it'll overflow to the next, which will be demonstrated a little bit better in the next series of tanks. So if you ever had a rain barrel, you probably know that it fills up very quickly and doesn't really go as far as you might hope it does. If we expand these tanks, like I said, the IBC totes are each 1,000 liters, so it's about depending on the barrel, but usually a barrel is anywhere between 150 liters to 200 liters, so it's maybe five or more rain barrels per coat. And uh, exactly the same way as the first tank, we're going to raise this up with another white tank, uh, get as much height out of it as we can. We're going to install one more of these Uta seals probably, and then overflow it directly to this first tank over here. This tank, once it all fills up, 
has a small uh, uniseal and grommet and a straight pipe. Maybe you can't see it from here, but it basically goes from one grommet to the next and fills this tank. So once this all fills up again, same thing, it overflows again down into this tank. I can show you all the way around the other side. You'll see that it's just like the other uh, sets of tanks. You've got the ABS pipe with the air release. It overflows for the uniseal with basic standard hardware components. You can bring all that water back down into the secondary tank. From this tank, this actually is full right now because we just drained it from the, uh, the black one. But normally this one would fill first, then this, then this, then this. And then same here, there's more connections between these two tanks and then these two tanks. This will be last. But there you have it. You can see just how many uh, thousands of liters. I guess it's 6,000 plus the other ones, like I mentioned. 1,000 liters per tote. And uh, that does carry through a little bit through the dry summer. I'll just try and show the little um, connections, right? Yeah, yeah. We, oh, yeah, I should maybe mention there's a lot of little uh, zip tie connections. Uh, a little bit of we have metal wire as well in case the zip ties run out eventually or wear out in the sunshine and it wouldn't uh, hurt to think about cladding the tanks all together with like a wood cladding or you could even think about uh, wrapping it with something so that was the um connecting um hose or oh, yeah, you can see in Sorry, the, yeah, you can see the uh, connection <laughs> down in between the tanks there yeah. <laughs> So yeah, if you guys have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments. That would be really helpful. I'd be glad to try to answer them. Uh, I'm not an expert, but this is what we did today, and uh, I think it's going to work out pretty well. Once we redirect, again, the, the gutters aren't quite redirected into the tops of these tanks, uh, but eventually we'll have them all hooked up, and it'll be automatically filling up. Oh, I forgot to show you the front a uh, little bit real quick. Again, same fittings, two-inch fittings, down to reducers with these quick connections. That way each tank, if it leaks, uh, it won't drain all the other tanks. And then we can just click on as we turn on the taps. And even if these taps break, we've got the secondary uh, leak protection mechanism. So we don't have the bottom tanks done yet, but we're, we're halfway there and, and that's it. We got a few more to go. And uh, I guess that's it. But like I said, please uh, like or comment or subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll have to answer them. Thank you very much. Cool. And if anybody's wondering what that is, it's just clay or mud. <laughs> okay. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye. Well, if you're still around, I know I just said goodbye, but there's just one more thing I should mention. These are all food grade totes that contain something uh, somewhat biological or edible. Uh, in this case, we got old canola oil. Uh, but just because it's food grade doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, that nice to clean up. And, uh, and it actually, uh, these particular was like these particular tanks were actually really stinging in the eyes. So we opened it up and we're smelling it. It was like, whoa, really strong fumes. So be aware of anything that's uh, been packaged in these things or repackaged in these things, and try to get them either clean or food grade or both would be ideal. And uh, sorry, what are you doing? I was just gonna say, so we clean them with like uh, soapy water, and now they don't smell, so, yeah, so it can be resolved. Them, and they're from the garden; they're not for drinking. And, like I said, yeah. if you want to cloud the whole surface, it might be even better for any kind of algae buildup. But uh, for, for now, we got several thousand liters, relatively cheap, and they're about $65 Canadian for 10 uncleaned food grade. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know. So, yeah, thanks. The rancid oil was so bad. <laughs>